It's been a while, but I'm back. I'm sorry that I've been away so long, but things have been bleak and dreary and not the type of environment for which I could give you some good stuff. I kept my eyes out and I kept my ears open. So if we would have needed to talk, I would have let it come back and done what I could. However, I've been gone for a while. Uh, I want to start this off and thank everyone for all the support. Email, prayers, everything for me and the things that I was going through with the illness to my brother. and It looked like he was done for. You know, they hadn't hadn't give him any chance after the newest things they had said. And we'll get into that in a minute. But God can heal anything. He doesn't work that way where you pray for everything all the time and you get it. It seems like he is he knows what you need and he knows what you want. And when he does work he works through what you need the most. I, I don't know if I can explain it exactly, and that might be the best I can do, but it's not what you want, it's what you need, and it's always not about you. It's It can be what somebody else needs. So when you look in your Bible, you know, they're all over the place. You find all these different verses of, of healing. So while you guys were praying, I was really praying. I mean, not that you weren't, but you know, I mean a lot more because it was my family. You know, it was always on my mind and I, I was saying silent prayers even even though it looked like I might be doing something else. So what we have there's all these different ones, and you can find them anywhere. It's just a, uh, just a generic site. You know, I just pulled it up to show you some of the verses. Psalms is good. You know, the Lord sustains them on their sick bed and restores them from their bed of illness. That's 41.3. Well, that's a really good one. I like that one. 147.3 is good. Well, they're all good, but he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And somebody's been brokenhearted at some point. Everybody gets it at least one time, surely. And then you have uh, Psalm 32. Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You know, Jeremiah 17 14 heal me Lord and I will be healed save me and I will be saved for you are the one I praise so all these different ones you see through the Bible of the healing power of God which now I'll get into what I was going to tell you. This video <clears throat> is a testimony from me to you and everyone else about what has happened. Now, I'm confident this is going to continue, but I can't foresee infinity, uh, finality. My brother was given 30 to 60 days after this latest stuff with him. His lung surgery where he had his lower lobe on his left lung had went totally bad. He had developed MRSA infection which got into his bloodstream and had entered into his organs. Uh, he'd had incidences of bleeding out his nose and his mouth. You know, just about everything that was possible to be going wrong began to go wrong. They took, uh, well, the original one, when this was said, they had taken another CAT scan of his chest. 
then they found that on the on at that time the most recent one indicated that the cancer that they removed in the lower lobe had some cells left somewhere and it was a very rapid growing rapid traveling cancer and that CAT scan showed it had went into the upper part of his left lung and because it was the same type of cancer as before that made it the, the fast acting kind. He was told he could not take chemo and radiation anymore because he had an earlier uh, tumor in his eye area, his eye and his nasal up behind there and he had, he had already took the treatments and got rid of that. So he beat that one time, the one behind his eye and, and his nose, his nasal area. But he used the chemo and the radiation then. Thereby they could give him nothing now. So he was too weak to even consider another operation to go in there and remove that lung. And it was discussed that even so, if they did, it could turn out possibly like the removal of the lobe to where they took the whole left lung out the whole procedure of trying to recuperate started all over again and then he could not make it through the operation being so weak or he could progress maybe and hold his own to a point like now and then they could take a new CAT scan and it could come up in somewhere else or in his lung or something and then you would be repeating this process over and over until you were dead. That is when the family was told and him 30 to 60 days or sooner. <clears throat> he had gotten so weak and sick and he had lost over 40 pounds and he was 115 pounds two days before he had his latest surgery so the latest surgery a week ago Monday was to go in and they this is a totally uh, different doctor working now than before well, they were going to go in and put another drainage tube in and the purpose of this was obviously drain out fluid around his heart you know the fluid so it wouldn't accumulate around his heart and uh, cause his heart to give out and to drain out some infection because it was going all over the antibiotics did not work and I met the doctor the day of it and they marked him on his side where they were going to go and do their drilling and go in there. Uh, they brought him out, they come back and said everything was a uh, success. Everything went very smoothly. Things were explained. Uh, what they did, the doctor had to go in a little deeper than he wished he would have had to because scar tissue had began to form. That made that a little bit tougher to get through, I believe, you know, the way he made it out once he started digging. And he actually took his fingers and he said he dug out clumps of infection. Actual, I tried to envision it, but it had to be some type of a clump because that's what he used as a word, clumps. And he said he dug out a lot. So he wanted to sound my brother's chest and see how much air was going in there after that. And he he said, I know he has pneumonia too, he did. And he said, I know you have a little bit of a pneumonia left, but I'll still be able to tell how much better it made it. And he asked him if he felt like he was breathing better and he said, yeah. So he began to sound him and he got done and he said, well, I." I heard a whole lot of air going through there. He said, I believe I got it about 90% open. So I want to do another CAT scan and I want to double check what I heard with what it's going to show on the picture. And at the same time, I want to take uh, 
a new blood workup and I want to see about that MRSA too. So he goes away. They do all the tests. We go to eat while he's doing his CAT scan. When we come back, the doctor <clears throat> and a new one that I had never met both come in the room, each of them carrying some papers, or some one was, one turned out to be papers, the other turned out to be what I'll tell you. And they said, we have some news, which I thought, well, what is it now? You know, hopefully not anything bad. The man that did the tubal, that doctor, he said, we have the results of your blood work, and your blood work looks fine. He said, it even looks better than fine. He said, I'm not sure how, but you don't have MRSA. So that's how that began. And so, naturally, the inquisitive guy that I am, I immediately said, well, you've got somebody else's test results there then. You know, it, it can't be both ways. I said, either originally you had somebody else's results and told him he had it when he didn't, or now this result has got mixed up and it's somebody else's results saying that he does not have it. And he said, no, this, this is his blood work. And he stood on that. Okay. So I'm still not believing because uh, I could not see how MRSA could be in a person's system at a high level and make them so sick and weak along with everything else to where two days later it's gone. When you're hitting it with vancomycin you know, the strongest bullet in your arsenal and you're taking one step forward and it's figuring out what you're shooting it with and then it pushes you two steps backward and you lose ground and it keeps doing that to where you keep going down 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 then when you hear two days later you don't have it you see what I'm saying well the next doctor he was an Arab. I didn't ask, or I think he was. I didn't ask what kind of, you know, where he was from. But I figured he was Indian or Pakistani or something. He turned out to be the chief of staff. <clears throat> and what I described earlier as papers in his hand actually turned out to be CAT scan pictures. And he began to speak. And he said, your CAT scan looks very good, very good, which at that point I was thinking that's what the other doctor was double checking. He wanted to see how much more clear it was of fluid and you know, infection and junk. And he said, out of the clear blue, there is no cancer in your left lung. And at naturally me again, right off the bat, because this was, you know, one one deal, and then we moved into a second one. And I said, well, this is, you know, the same thing. Can't be right. You know, these films have been mixed up, and maybe he didn't even need to have his lower lobe cut out. Y'all might have made a super giant mistake, you know, and and now it is what it is and it made him mad and he looked at me and he said I have read over 10,000 of these type of scans myself and I do not make mistakes and he said radiologist has read over a million and I know him personally very well and he does not make mistakes well I wasn't actually 
to totally out and out, you know, flattening him in with, no, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. Then he walked off, and he came back. This time, he had paperwork. And he said, uh, All right. you can read, right? <laughs> he kind of got me right there, and I said, well, of course. Well, would you please read this to everyone? And it was uh, the typewritten uh, in the radiologist's words. And so I proceeded to read his written statement, uh, that lung showing no cancer. Uh, it did show a node, but the node had been uh, found to be benign. And then he asked, do you know what B9 is? And of course we all did. And there was like five different papers of stuff like that. And the reason there was five different papers, or however many there were, there were multiple ones, at least three reports that I read. It all happened, uh, well, it all happened quick. But they took the last three CAT scans leading up to this one that showed nothing. And they let us all look at the three prior before this one. And you could plainly see what they were talking about, pointing out to be cancer. And then it was quite spotable. But on the last one that I'm telling you about, it was totally different. I mean, it was obvious different than the other ones. Well, it was a shock, and it wasn't hard to believe. I, I found myself to be, uh, well, you know how I think. You know, I, I want to know. I want to know why. And uh, I should have known why, but I guess I was a doubting Thomas, and I've already apologized to him for that. But what I'm saying is there's been a healing, and the doctors left it because I asked. Are you saying that God has, you know, taken the cancer and the MRSA away? Is that what you're saying? And they didn't say that. What they said was, we didn't treat his lung for any type of cancer uh, therapy. It was there, and nothing that we were doing was treating it. We were treating the MRSA with the vancomycin, but it was working some but then the MRSA caught up with it, and then the MRSA was outrunning it and getting ahead of it. So, the antibiotic could not have got rid, rid of it, and that is why we had to do the tubal, because it was taking over with the infection and the fluid buildups and such. So they left it kind of like nothing that medicine did that they were doing worked or in the lung area nothing they weren't treating that so they weren't giving him anything for that so when I sat down by myself oops and I thought about it <clears throat> I realized I, had, I was a doubting Thomas we'd all been praying for this and so had I but the first thing I did was try to disprove it. Uh, well, I wouldn't say I tried to disprove it. I just tried to really, really, really prove that no mistake had been made so that it could be real. Well, it was real. And this is something that I've only read about or seen videos about. It's the kind of thing that we all do, you know, when people ask us for prayers for things and we, we do it for them. We're, you know, we're not around to see it, but somewhere somewhere else, they're 
possibly getting it, the results of it, the positive blessing of it. So I had told some stories of my mother and, and myself on an earlier, way earlier video when I first came to YouTube. And, uh, well, I guess my brother's been the recipient of uh, some help. And I want to reaffirm to, to anybody, he hears what you pray. He knows your heart and your need. And he knows the pain that you're in when you're suffering. I can't explain exactly why everybody doesn't get everything taken away when hard times come. But I know that some people do. And my brother has been one of them. And we need to... I have been, and I haven't made this video until now, because I wanted, you know, I was still... I wanted to make sure that it was going to last, you know. And it has, so... I know. Something has happened, and he's got more time. And it's not an easy road, because he's been told, keep your mind positive. And this is the words of the uh, Middle Eastern doctor. Have positive frame of mind. No negativity. It will not be easy for you. You're going to need rest. You, as we all know, your body heals better when you're like asleep, you know, you're resting. And we told him, lots of rest and it's going to be slow. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. But he saw no reason based upon the current testing that they have done and what it shows that he couldn't recover and have some type of a life. You know, we're not at the point yet where we'll know will he need to uh, like wear a portable oxygen thing all the time. Well, we're not sure about that yet. But if he does, well, he will. But he'll he'll be here for his you know family and brothers, sisters, grandkids, and stuff like that a little bit longer. So God has blessed with more time, our family, with allowing us to be with our brother a little while longer. And I pray for anybody that needs something that's in a tough situation like I was in my family. Because uh, I want them to have as much of the same thing as what we felt right now. They've sent him home. <clears throat> he has been home since Saturday. So if I got it right, he spent right at, <laughs> this is going to be amazing here, it was 34 days when I went down last Monday, so, well, it was pretty close. That would have been 41. Oh, he spent right at uh, 39 days in. One short of 40 days. So he has to, uh, you know, get stronger, of course, for not walking, which then will hopefully lead to more endurance. And it's, like the doctor said, it's going to take time. But God didn't make it easy for him to come back, but he let him come back. And, man, I love my God. I don't know about some of these non-believers and whatnot, but I hope they understand that you can't get this unless you believe. There's no one for you to go to. So why don't you break open your heart and spill it all out? and give it to him. He gives you so much that you take for granted. And he only asks you for one thing.
to believe. And I'm going to close with this guy. I don't know about this one. You all heard of that Dan Savage? Maybe, maybe not. This is just a few closing words about him. We got to pray for guys like him, even. You know, because they're they're totally lost. Um, and I watched the video of the guy, and he went into uh, well, he was giving a speech. And yeah, here it says at a high school co journalism conference. And he was referring to, you know, BS in the Bible and what it says about gay people. And he was just ranting all this, this anti stuff about, well, they mainly had to do about gay people, uh, a lot of it at the beginning that I watched, about how the Bible was wrong about it. And he was just kind of like a, you know, a, a Bill Maher anti-Bible journalist or something. And I remember I saw some of the kids just, you know, they took enough of it or something, and they even got up and walked out. Not all of them did. There were still some of them sitting there, you know, later on clapping and applauding him and jump. But you were seeing some people sticking up for, for their God and their Bible and not wanting to hear you know, crud like that that comes out of Dan Savage's mouth. So, even though I speak strongly against him and what he's doing, at least what he said then when I watched him, we still can't turn our backs even on people like him. Because he's done. He just doesn't know it. Right now, what he thinks about that has got him in trouble. And so we even got to pray for people like that, that they get, you know, they get turned around somehow. And they, they understand that doing what they're doing and saying what they're saying is wrong. Now that's my story. I hope I explained everything right. And, you know, he could, you know, maybe his time is three days from now or something. It could be if that's the way God's plan works for him and for my family. But I know what was wrong with him is not wrong with him now. And it's amazing that that a lung full of cancer is gone. Like I said, it was two days before he had that tubal surgery and they had took the last CAT scan. And the last one showed that it was there. Then two days later he has that surgery. They do a new one to double check the, the fluid build up and stuff and the infection in the lung. And it all comes back looking great. And it's gone. So, there is healing. There really is. But don't think that you can't get any. Don't think that you're not good enough. Don't think it's only made for someone else. It's, it's for all of us. It's part of the free gift. You just got to believe. And I know you guys do. A lot, most of you. And you can bet this just reaffirms everything that I already knew. This is touched personally. And, uh, you know, even if my brother were to pass away right now as I made this video, I would still know that he got healed from what that was. So, Hopefully, this is not going to go away. You know, I don't think it will, though. I keep, I keep wanting to go backwards and wonder, but I'm not going to look backwards. I'm going to look forward to, no, it's not going away, because he gave it to you. And he's not going to take it away. And if he does, it won't be the same way it was before. Oh, I forgot. There's one little addition to this whole thing. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I, I have to do this at the end. It should have come earlier, but, but i got to tell it anyway. He had been saying that he had been seeing and talking to my, my mom. And she passed away 
be three years ago in November. So I wait. I didn't want to upset him because he was weak, and they told me, you know, whenever whenever they did ask him about it, he got kind of upset. Well, if he only had 30 to 60 days, I, I wanted to know. And I waited till after that surgery. And this would be after all the doctor stuff and everything, and we found out that that everything's gone. After that, I got him alone, and I asked him, "Did you see Mom, or do you think that you were just on the medication, and it could have been, you know, a hallucination, or do you think that you were so weak that you were like borderline life death?" And he said, I, I'm not really sure. He said, but but I know, I saw her. And I said, okay. Well, what did she look like? Did she look like the last time that she was alive? And he said, she looked like mom. But she looked like mom when I was about 16. Well, that would have been when I was real, real little. So I understood what she looked like then because, you know what? got all the pictures. And the second part, I asked him, did you talk to her? I heard that there was some some talking. They told me that you said. He said, w w I didn't really talk very much. Just about, I love you, I love you son, things like that. And he said, but on each time, he didn't tell me how many times, he said each time she was saying, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. And he told me, I thought it'll be okay meant, it'll be okay if you die to let go and come on over. He said, so I was taking that, that, you know, mom was there telling me it was okay to let go and not be afraid and come on over. He said, but now that the doctors have told me this, I realize it'll be okay meant you're not going anywhere. It'll be okay. So everything is okay for now. And it looks like we might just go ahead and have that 4th of July barbecue like we've been planning. I'm planning on it. He is too. And that's my testimony. And I hope you believe it. Because I don't have any way to prove it. Other than telling you about it. And I'm glad that I have such good friends that hung with me. And didn't ditch me. And that prayed hard for me. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you share it with others. I'll talk to everybody real soon. I'll see ya.